We're going to talk about system science, another important part of the training. Remember, we do this for healthcare scientists, but also for citizen scientists. And mm. Sarah mm. is a uh, head of that initiative in MBG. Mm. Although mm. the name is there for, for let's say, for, actually it would be Sarah. Mm. Uh, I didn't have, when I was starting the program, I didn't have yet her agreement, so... You don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> we are among <laughs> colleagues, okay. Yeah. So, Sarah, yes, please. Okay, yes. Yeah. So, as Spiro said, we have citizen science actually all over BGE in many work packages um, in Erga and Bioscan. There is one task in work package two, which is only uh, concerned with organizing workshops for citizen scientists, but we also have um, bio blitzes in work package, I can't remember, but five, yeah, 11 and 12, and there may be even more. So, it's it's all over the project and we are trying to actually look at, um, together with Roya, who's, who's heading this, we're trying to look at who's doing what in terms of citizen science and how we can bring this all together on one in one place in, in the BGE webpage. Uh, so the overall goals are, of course, to support the collection and identification of samples for DNA barcoding, work together with citizen scientists to interpret the findings and engage society with genomic approaches. And Elena is very much involved with this in Work Package 5 with the stakeholder mapping. So, um, this was a, a talk we already gave uh, to, to our task about what you have to think about when you're organizing workshops for citizens. So, one very important thing is that citizen scientists are not just your data collectors. So, they're not your free workforce that's going out and changing your bottles on your malaise traps. They have to be involved from the start uh, of the project. The project has to be explained to them. They have to be involved not only with collection, but ideally with analysis, interpretation, publication, communication. So the whole workflow, basically. And this is really difficult, I think. You really have to put some thinking into this, into how you implement this and how you engage people on the long term. Um, so there's different ways to do this. You can, you can organize a workshop, you can organize a bio blitz. We have both going on in BGE. Um, so this is uh, just a few points about what you have to think about if you're thinking about doing a bio blitz, if you're thinking about doing a workshop, uh, from the planning to the feedback and evaluation, basically, of the event. Uh, so we also identified different levels of citizen scientists. You, you have, for, for instance, we already talked about that, the amateur taxonomist um, community, and they are very much involved because they're identifying the samples for us. Uh, there's also entomology societies or naturalist societies. There's conservation practice practitioners. So we want to harness all of their knowledge for the project, basically. Then we have early career scientists, so they could be post, uh, PhDs, masters, postdocs. Um, they also uh, play a very big part. So maybe the, the workshop we had yesterday is maybe we have to discuss this in a group, but maybe it's more focused towards that type of uh, that kind of group of early career scientists. Uh, and then we have the rest of them, so the, the broader public, uh, <laughs> beginners. Um, so how can we address their needs? You know, what, what, what can we do that will be interesting for them? Um, of course, not everything we do will be interesting for them, but how can we bring along interesting and important concepts of BGE? So it's more about the concepts of barcoding, whole genomes, and how these can be used for conservation. Um, so just a few things to consider. One important thing, uh, important thing here, uh, ethical approval and GDPR. Uh, so these are things that many people tend to forget. So uh, Roya is involved in the ethical approval. And so there are, there are many aspects when you organize a workshop that you should think about in terms of ethics. And we will go into this in Barcelona in more detail. Um, then again, you have to know how your workshop is adding value for the participants. So it's not just for us. It's how, how will you help them advance their own skills as well as the project? Um, how are you engaging them on the long term again? What kind of documentation are you providing them before the workshop? And uh, how do you engage them with the results of the project at the end? 
So I was, I was uh, thinking about that, especially on the first day when we were handling liquid nitrogen and, you know, all sorts of other nice stuff, dry ice. You know, is this laboratory-based work really suited for citizen scientists? So my first reaction was no, not really. Uh, you can't really have anyone coming into the lab and doing this stuff. So uh, uh, from which level are we thinking here? Um, because task 12.1 is actually supposed to bring this to, the, to a wider audience. So for me, it, it, early career scientists, I think. But we can discuss this and we can look at your ideas. Of course, the ethical approval would be really important in this case, especially if you have a lab-based um, lab based work. Uh, people have to know before they enter the room that they're going to be handling liquid nitrogen and dry ice and that uh, explosions may happen. So ah. <laughs> that was kind of not planned. Uh, it happened behind Roya's back. Maybe that would have been a problem for someone who doesn't like explosions. I don't know. But um, so there, there are a lot of things which we have to kind of think about before we even involve, put anyone into the lab. The other thing is a lot of these steps for me are like a recipe. So how, how do you actually bring along the concept of what's happening in the tube at the molecular level? So that was totally missing. For, for, so it's, we know that. So for us, this isn't a problem. But if you have someone who just goes in and sees colorless liquids being transferred from one tube to the next, you don't know what was going on in the tube at the molecular level. So that level is more interesting, I think, for a citizen or for whoever who's trying to learn about barcoding or, or you know, genome sequencing. So maybe instead of actually involve, involving them in the actual uh, lab work, the interesting thing would be to produce a video a bit like when I'm sitting at home watching a cooking program. So I don't want to do the cooking, I just want to watch the cooking <laughs> and maybe one day, if I have time, I'll start cooking. But watching the cooking is more interesting and less work, right? So maybe we can actually, uh, you know, condense that into a short 10 minute video with an animation actually showing you what's going on in the tube, in the background at the molecular level. So I, I think I would really like that. And then we don't have to deal with all the ethical aspects in this case. Um, so I'm thinking, uh, you know, how, how do you bring along the conceptual thing about barcoding? So there's a very easy way of doing it, which we are already doing in many of the workshops in BGE. Um, in T4.2, we're doing this. A six-year-old can do barcoding. So we have uh, strings of beads, as you can see on the picture there. So we make uh, 20 base pairs. So we have four colors for the different bases. Uh, and um, they have to find... Uh, in this case, we had them in Easter eggs. They had to find the eggs. And then they had to decode the string. And then they had a, a reference library, which is the matching sheet. And a six-year-old can do this in, in two minutes. So, you know, they have really f a lot of fun doing this. Uh, so this has been replicated in many of our workshops. We've had eight workshops so far. We've had uh, workshops in Portugal where they've done this game. But they've also, they also have another DNA barcoding game. Uh, and they've done it in Norway as well. So you can adapt this to any animal group uh, you want. So in this case, it's fish, but I think Torbjorn has done it for insects as well. So. so we need to think a little bit creatively as to how we can translate the knowledge into something easy to understand for someone who doesn't have any background at all, basically. Like this, so eDNA, that's the concept of eDNA, a very easy image, for instance. Uh, and I also wanted to show you, Alice uh, told me that in the Cal eDNA project, they already produced a lot of these videos. Um, and that is a California project, which is slow, it's mainly run by citizens, right? Citizen science. Exactly. So all the missing steps are shown to them on these videos. So they can see once the sample comes in, it goes to the freezer. And then they can see what someone does with it in the lab. Um, and so, so on. Play one of the yeah, maybe. Yeah, go ahead. So, this is the website. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I can try and play this video. Yeah, we can down. try. This is a really short one, but I d actually don't think it needs to be very long. Once we receive a kit back, Move the samples into our super cold 
negative 80 degrees Celsius freezer and record the kit number and freezer location in a database. That's a really nice with the Pac-Man enzymes. Freezing stops enzymatic activity of microbes in the soil and preserves the DNA in each sample. Okay, excellent idea. And so if you go up, there's actually oh. more. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I, th I think, go up? Uh, uh, Down, I mean? Uh, top. Down? Down, okay. Oh, yeah, there are more. There's more, yeah. You want to try and play off the other? Yeah, it's a short, probably a very short one as well. Right. But I'm just thinking about the graphics here, or do, you know, do we want to do this, or do we just, you know, this stuff exists on the, online already. So. Research project. They can look through the database and select samples to test their hypotheses. Okay. 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 The researcher retrieves the samples from the Cali DNA freezer, puts them on ice, and either extracts DNA directly or, in most cases, pools the biological replicates into a single new sample before extracting DNA. Yeah, so no, it's, it's very idea. short, but yeah. uh, maybe we can go to the website. Uh, PG? Yeah, the, the uh, past the events. Past events, yes. What is that? At the bottom, right? Yeah. yeah here. So they're not all up there, but so what we do is we also document, thanks to Jose, uh, so we also have um, in most workshops a professional photographer who will take photos. You can click on this one. This one is from Portugal and they have really fantastic photos from uh, if you go up. Down. Down. Yeah. No, I think. Yeah, there. Yeah. So that was Sonia in Portugal. And actually mo most of these people are not just there for the workshop. They're also collecting uh, the samples for uh, task 4.5, 4.4 4 and 4.5, um, the malaise traps basically in the field. So the, the, this, is th this is done by these volunteers who are also participating not just in one workshop but a whole series of workshops and this is the game also that, um, that Sonia developed uh, about insect identification. So the idea was that we bring this to the next level and that we start uh, bringing the lab-based and bioinformatic-based stuff to, to the wider, wider audience. So my question would be, ha do you have any ideas as to how we can do that in a, in a, in a way that would suit everybody w without having to bring people into the lab? I think your idea with the video is an excellent one. I'm That's only it. thinking of who can make those videos. I mean, recording people displaying things, yes, but the animation, maybe we can try and find someone that can help us. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I like that idea. I mean, I often you, when I don't know about something like inducing, multiplexing, mm -hmm. I go on YouTube and try to find them. These videos are usually the ones that I understand, help me understand most. So these videos do exist? Yeah, exactly. So we don't want to reinvent the wheel, but then mm -hmm. permission rights? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And do we want to have our own BGE videos? That's I don't see question. why not. Yeah. I mean, we all want BGE to carry on forever. Yeah. But Five years from now, do we want to make more videos because we don't want to use BGE branded videos? So it's like this balancing the branding. So mm. like the site must be branded, but maybe the videos aren't so branded. Mm. So they can be repurposed. Mm. But then they, and they're also, sorry, just that they're really bite-sized so that they can be reused in various combinations. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they don't need to be more than two, three minutes long. That's true. Units, exactly. So like we've seen, you know, what's happening in the field, what's happening once the samples get to the lab, and what's happening in DNA extraction, what's happening in the tube, what's happening by when we sequence. Yeah. But it is, uh, of course, a lot of work, so, <laughs> yeah. And even better if they're a graphic designer and not a biologist, because then, you, you, uh, you know, we don't understand what, which is the part that is difficult to understand so excellent i also agree 100 with both of you like uh yeah i think putting the science to the lab is a dangerous thing and uh, mm. you can you cannot compress all no. the knowledge of uh, biologists into a two-day work for citizens <coughs> but those videos are excellent <coughs> idea mm. i will i just will explore this option with a group of uh, 
task for 2.1 at uh, 12.1 and maybe i can ask a few people also get mm. some pricing also from our part we have very an excellent draft you have all the footage so we have a lot of footage yeah thank you and <laughs> who knows maybe we ask also together we the, the yeah. pricing yeah and uh yeah look forward to this idea okay. Thank you. Thank you.